Welcome to this Vacutainer demo. Uh, this is going to be a bit of the quicker one with some subtitles. Uh, you're going to always start by sanitizing your hands. Ask your patient to spell their first and last name and ask for their date of birth. And make sure you match that to the lab requisition. Some patients are going to have a preferred arm. Just make sure you choose a site that doesn't have any rashes, scars, injuries, edema. Uh, and then apply your tourniquet three fingers above the bend in the elbow. When you're choosing a vein, uh, your median cubital is going to be the best option because it's going to be the sturdiest and roll around the least. The other veins are good options as well. Uh, they're just going to be a little bit more fragile and uh, a little bit harder to pin down. Once you have a vein chosen, look at where it is going. You want to look at its direction. Not all veins go up and down. Uh, look at how deep it is. Choose a landmark like a freckle or a skin tag so you remember where that is. Remove a tourniquet before prepping the site. Uh, you don't want to leave it on for more than one minute, otherwise that can alter your test results. When you prep the site, use an alcohol pad to wipe uh, in concentric circles moving outwards. Once it is sanitized, you do not want to touch it. You want that site to be as clean as possible when you're putting that needle into the skin. While your patient is drying, go ahead and prepare your equipment. Get your gloves, gauze, needle, holder, tubes, tape, or coban. Your holder or your needle need to have a safety device. And make sure you have a sharps container nearby. Uh, I like to have my bandage materials ready before I start the procedure, but it's up to you if you want to do it before or after. But it's always a good idea to have your gauze ready before you start the procedure. My preferred setup is to have one piece of gauze and then two or three pieces of gauze stacked next to it, and then have my piece of tape or coban already ripped and stuck to my tray, just like waiting for me to grab it. If you've lost your landmark, that's okay. You can look for it again, uh, but make sure you sanitize your gloved finger with an alcohol pad before you look for it again. While you're waiting for your patient to dry, assemble your equipment. Uh, remove that bottom cap off of your needle and then screw that needle into your holder. Make sure you screw it in tight because you don't want that needle coming off while you are puncturing the vein. A quick note, wait for the alcohol to dry to prevent pain when you insert the needle and to prevent uh, specimen contamination. Remember to not remove that needle cap until you are ready to go into the vein. You don't want a needle just kind of hanging around. Retie your tourniquet and place your thumb one inch below your sight to anchor the vein. Gently push down and then pull towards the patient's hand. Now you can uncap your needle and take a look at that needle. Look at the bevel. Make sure that bevel is facing upwards because that will give you the sharpest point to insert into that vein. The needle should be at a 30 degree angle to the skin surface. If the needle is too flat, you're going to miss that vein. And if the needle is pointing down too much, you will go right through the vein. Hold the needle and the holder steady once you're in there and grab your first tube. When you insert the tube, make sure you're using the flange on the holder to insert the tube without jostling the needle around, which can hurt your patient. You will know that the tube is done filling when blood stops flowing into the tube. Remove that tube, invert it gently, and then switch out to your next tube in the order of draw. Now is a good time to check in on your patient. If they aren't doing well, you need to stop, have them lay down, have a drink of water, and put a cool towel on their neck. When your last tube is halfway full, remove the tourniquet. Wait for the tube to fill completely before removing it. Once you've removed it, grab your thick pad of gauze that you have waiting for you and don't press down on the needle. You're going to want to take that gauze and place it above the needle and then pull out your needle smoothly. Once that needle is out, then you can go ahead and apply pressure. Ask your patient to apply pressure for you while you go ahead and prep the tubes. Invert your tubes gently about eight times and then either write or apply your pre-printed labels. Double check with your patient that you have the correct information there. Set your samples aside and finish caring for your patient. Take that little piece of gauze that you have left and fold it up and replace the gauze that you were just using. Apply tape or coban and instruct your patient that they can remove the bandage in about 10 to 15 minutes. If the site is still bleeding after they remove the bandage, they're going to want to apply pressure, and if it's still bleeding after that, they should call the clinic. 
When your patient has been taken care of, prepare your samples for testing. Put them in a biohazard bag with your lab requisition. You'll either need to walk it across the hall to the lab in your clinic or send it off-site for testing. And there you go. Thank you for checking this out. This is my first video I've ever like edited, so hopefully it's good. Uh, if you have any suggestions, questions, if I messed anything up, forgot something, please leave it in the comments. I just uploaded a video of a visualization tool that I found on Pinterest when I was a student. Um, it'll help you memorize the order of draw based on the color of the caps of your tubes uh, when you're getting blood samples. You start at the top, you go to the bottom, and at the end of the video, you'll have something to put on your fridge. Or you can do what I did and put it on your mirror and stare at it while you brush your teeth for six months. Um, yeah, I'll see you in class and maybe I'll see you on Zoom tutoring sometime. And don't forget, it's the uh, Professional and Technical Learning Center, not the Learning Center for Math and Science. Uh, okay, bye.